my crew. We do what we do, what we want to do. This here, might, this here might not be for you. This is what we want to be. Up in the sand in the sun. Cannons and guns. Yo ho ho guys, you know what it is. Hype 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 hyper Thursday. Sorry for the late up upload. I was busy today with a lot of other things that I'm also had to get stuff set up for my stream later. I won't be streaming this later. I am actually doing an IRL comic reading stream. So if you're coming to that, don't expect it to be this game or a game tonight at all. Anyway, let's get to the meat of this. I am doing Jennifer again. Alright, I need this is a redux on a previous tutorial that I've di I did for this particular hyper. Because my other tutorial is hot garbage. It is hot, straight, nasty garbage. It's disgusting. And we won't talk about it. Now, I'm not going to remove the first tutorial for it. Because I want it to be there to show growth. And show that, you know, there is a, this whole game is a learning process. Again, as I've said before, and I try to say in most of my videos, if not all of them, this is a way to help get you in, acquainted with the character, get you in with the character, and kind of develop... At that point, you can kind of develop how you want to play your playstyle and your item build. This is just kind of a quick setup for you. Anyway, here we go, guys. I'm going to go with my straight defensive type build. Like, Jennifer is a bruiser, right? She's not directly a tank, but the way I like to build her is where I can survive when I go in and do damage. Because trust me, she's one of those one of those hypers. And this can be said about, uh, about many, many, many different uh, MOBAs. They always have characters that no matter how tanky you build them, they do damage. If you are if you play League, it's kind of like Hecarim. You build him tanky, and this dude still does an obscene amount of damage. It just doesn't matter. Like, the game goes, oh, you want to play a straight tank? Joke's on you. You're probably going to steal this kill on accident. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. It's kind of how that happens. Um, but let's get, let's get into the nit and the grit. The nitty-gritty, as it were. Increase our level, as always. Unlock that ultimate. Time to go over the skills before we do. Let's just slide on over here. Also, I would like to point out that this this particular character, let's zoom back out and zoom back in. This girl is apparently a teenager. So let that sit in there. Let it just sink in. She's a teen. Yep. Anyway, so as always, we're going to go over the standard attack. So I'm going to show you what her standard combo looks like when she's just swinging. As like with everybody, it is a three strike thing. Now, that uppercut does not launch them, unfortunately. That'd be a really cool passive. But as you just saw, her passive did unlock. Now, I'll highlight the passive and read it to you, but I'm going to explain it to you in essence, as it were, before doing that. So every time I strike, I build up impact, which is this number down here. It builds up by 5. Now, once it hits 100, they get downed. Now, downing someone also does something for you as well. It changes one of your skills. It changes your A, to be exact. Her passive is called Hyper Impact. Fills an enemy's in, fill an enemy's impact gauge when Jennifer attacks them. The impact gauge functions as follows. Each skill fills up the impact gauge by a different amount. When an enemy gauge reaches 100, they're down for one second. Impact gauge decreases by one every second. So each one of my skills, in fact, does fill up the impact gauge. On top of that, so does my normal standard attack. Now, if you look at your A, is your hyper smash unloads Jennifer's fist and on her foe doing 177 plus your applicable damage if the enemy has been downed hyper by hyper impact the skill changes to hyper stomp hyper stomp stomps on enemy down by hyper impact created creating a shockwave within 300 units that does 284 plus you know max health so it's um it's a percent health damage type deal um on top of that it's not just if they're down by max by a hyper impact. If they are down at all, your A will change if you're near enough to them. But let me show you what it looks like. So this is your A normally, like that was just my A. It increased it. You saw the increase in the gauge, and then they're down. Even the image changes, okay? Even the image changes. So that's an indicator. But you should already be aware when you when you start playing, or you'll be aware when they're down. Like you'll just know automatically. Oh, I need to hit A. So you'll, you'll essentially save your A most times, unless you can get that nice, clean, hot, crisp kill off of your uh, off of your A. Or you just need them to be down for a second so you can do more damage. It's always good to optimize your damage no matter what. So even if you just need them down and you're not trying to down them specifically to do the percent health damage off your hyper stomp, and you can just keep them there for just a little bit longer just to down them. I mean, not just to down them, just to kill them, or just to get that increased damage on them so they can, in fact, be killed. You know, that works too. That works perfectly fine. Don't let anyone tell you that it doesn't. That definitely works fine. 
Now Hyper Pummel is her Q, and unleashes a flurry of strikes, pushing enemies back and doing 57 plus, you know, the applicable damage amplifiers that you have, damage up to six times. Hyper uh, Impact Gauge is per hit plus six. So let's see what it looks like. All right, and that just dropped it. That just jumped it up to 36, dude. Like right there, and as you can see, Hyper Impact going down. All right, so her W charges up a punch that grants the following while charging. Hold the skill key to charge for two seconds. Full charge takes 0.5 seconds. The damage increases with the charge up to 100%. Distance increases with the charge up to 50%. Cannot move while charging. That's important to note. You can't move while charging. It's also important to note she's a hyper that cannot use her skills while jumping, so keep that in mind. When the key is released, Jennifer launches forward 1,000 units minimum, so it's a, it's a far jump forward. With her punch that does at least 224 plus your applicable damage amplifiers, the charge ends after two seconds or when another skill is used. Cooldown is five seconds after use. So let's see what it looks like. All right, this is with not charging it fully. That's the minimum distance, right? That's the minimum distance. And now if you charge it fully, you go you go soaring. All right. Now this is actually really good for uh, this. The skill is really great for getting back in the lane. Like if you need to go help a lane and they're they need you there quickly, you can just slide in there and then you're gonna startle your enemy. Like they're like, oh crap, Jesus Christ, there's Jennifer in my face. What's going on? I don't understand. Someone call the police. And you're like, well, I'm I'm a superhero, so shut up and deal with it. Um, the this this particular skill is good for getting in and getting out. So essentially, you could you know go in with it. You don't want to do it like this, though. I, I'm glad I did that. You do, you do not want to use this skill when you're like that, because you just gave them an out. Unless it's going to kill them, you just gave them a way to get away from you. Like, flat out. They can just get away from you. The most you can do is turn around and kind of dash back, unless you have your ultimate up. But it's definitely not a crisscross kind of skill. Now, you can use it to get in and then just start attacking them. One of the hardest things with the skill that you to master, it's something that you'll definitely get used to, is your distance, right? So you, you need to be able to gauge your distance there, and you need to be able to see if you're going to land right behind them or if you're going to land farther behind them where you have to jump back to them. It's never good to put yourself in a position where you're so far away from your target that you have to dash back to them because that gives them a way to get away. It gives them a way to get out. It gives them an option, whereas they shouldn't have an option to get away from you. So that's something to note. Now her E, this is something that people love to use, and my god, is it obnoxious if the person knows how to do it right. So basically you soar skyward or down, you go up or down, you can go between layers, but you will uh, go through the layer and you'll knock them down essentially. So you can go up or down, that's just a whole lot of ways to explain that you can go up or down. Um, and she damages enemies within 300 units. So if you just press it, right? It automatically, it automatically just hits the ground. I'm going to go up top here real, real quick and show you. So if you just press it, you don't go down. If you just press it, it doesn't happen. You have to hit the direction you want to go. In this case, it's going to be up. because I want to, Well, in this case, I'll do down. Hold the direction first, right? And then press it. So that's important to note. Hold the direction first and then press it. It's very important to note that because if you don't, you're not going to go where you're trying to go. Now, remember, that automatically downs them. And also, your launch up does not hurt someone if they're close to you. So that automatically downs them. Your A is already switched over. I didn't do it fast enough, but yeah, your A is already switched over. There you go. Oh lord, your A when you, when they down, they your A switches over, so you can actually do your hyper stomp. I'm messing it up right now, like really hard. There we go. That was weird. It did both, but one cooldown does not reset the other. By the way, just so you know. Either way. The point of that, the point of the skill that I really wanted to get across is that you have to hold the direction you want to go before you activate the skill. So do not press E and then press. It's it's not going to work. Don't press E and then press your direction. You want to press the direction you want to go, be it down or up, and then you press E. Like that's just how that works. All right, now then. So her hyper haymaker, which is her ultimate, her final skill, her big bang booty bomb boosterlicious attack, the one that you're going to be slapping people with constantly. She charges forward with a massive punch. Now she does applicable damage. She does a lot of damage, actually. And she pushes the enemy back as well. Enemies hit by the fist, by the, I'm sorry, by the first one take the same damage and are launched by a point, are launched for 0.8 seconds. Impact gauge pushed enemy plus 100. Impact gauge launched enemy plus 50. All right, so check it out. Oh, that's my E again. So that's, that's what that looks like. You can mess this up and miss it. You can. You now if she if you run into them, you're just gonna run into them. 
So that's that's not to say that you can mess it up and miss it like that. Let's see this here. There you go. So that's essentially what that skill is. So when I was talking about landing behind them or um, now also the hop is pretty far. You do not have to hold the directional button for that hop. It's gonna be it's gonna go in the direction that you're facing. You do not have to hold the direction. But if you do not make contact with someone, it will not do the blast and it will not hit the others around them. Notice that the contact point is not her fist. It's a little bit in front of her fist. I didn't actually land that hit on him. There is a small ball that comes from her fist, that orb right there. That's the actual impact point. So that impact point is what you need to hit. You don't need to try and hit her fist exactly because rightfully so her fists are small. So that, that impact point would be really hard to hit. You're aiming for the orb in front of her fist that's kind of glowing around it. That is what's going to get you your hit. Now, if it does hit, if you do land the hit, oh boy, if you do land the hit and they go flying back, everybody that's behind them that gets caught in the wake of that storm that flies out as well, gets hit as well. So everybody's getting hit. So let's go over a few things, right? So you got your W. You can, well, he's in the corner, so let's just, let's just do that. We're going to restart and we're going to reset him. There we go. Alright, so you got your W, and the way you can set that up is then you can do that. You never want to put yourself in a position to do that unless you know for sure that's what you want to do. For example, if your team is pretty far back here, right, and you want to get that person over there, you can do that, knock them back into your team, and then your team can go ham bones on them. You know, that's just that just is what it is. And remember, with your uh, all your skills, they can all be linked together, by the way, and you can come directly out of... Uh, you can come directly out of a out of a skill into another is basically what I'm saying. So you can do Q, A, and then you can just keep on going. You can just keep on going. Um, now your positioning is really important with Jennifer, like obscenely important. Again, you want to know exactly when you need to launch, where you need to go, why you need to be there, right? This is this is key. This is also something that that is true for just in general. Hypers, when you figure out how the hyper works and how the hyper plays, you need to understand why you're going to where you're going. If your only thought when you're going into the lane or going going somewhere, even in the jungle, is I'm going here to kill this person, you're not going for the right reason. You need to understand what happens at that point. Why do you need them dead? Right? Are you just doing it for the gold? Or are, you, are, you, are you doing it to set the enemy team back so you all have a pushing advantage? Or are you doing it because once this person is dead, the whole, the whole squad's gone and you all can go get... Um, an objective like why are you doing it why are you going there when you go in the lane if you see someone there like you see your teammates in there are you going there to secure a kill or are you going there to get your team out that is important you need to know why you're going in so if you go in and your purpose is to get your team out kind of try to make sure it's known right because if they see a full help jennifer go in they're probably going to be thinking oh man you know i, I could i could probably fight this and if that's not what you're intending you need to make sure they know somehow ping them or something and then go in and, and you know secure their safety if you're going in for a kill just go ham bones right and typically people typically people will follow up with you and you know you know secure the kill jennifer is a monster at team fights so if you can get her in, in a good position to team fight definitely go for it one of the best things that she has in her kit though is this movement between layers because you're you could have your team getting slapped on right they're getting cram like creme brulee and then you're like hold up now i got you guys and then bam you're you're down there everybody that got hit with that is now downed and your team can just unleash a fury that is so wild upon them now cc does hurt jennifer like any hyper but with her it hurts a lot because her movement is restricted and she's just kind of stuck um but building her with the build that i have it kind of helps so what is the build you might be wondering by this point so of course titan combat boots because i want to start off with that hot fresh defense <laughs> Um, and then what we I mean, it's it's a cheap start with defense too. That's always good. And when you're building a bruiser or someone kind of tanky, it's always good to get like a quick cheap defense. Now the next item I actually get the first part of it is expensive. It's not super expensive, but it is expensive. So you're gonna want to farm up pretty hard. I usually play Jennifer when I do play her in the jungle, so I can get my farm on. I get my farm game set, fam. And um, it is foul totem. It gives you max health plus 100, so you already got your cheapo defense and you got your max health plus 100, but it's, it's the item's passive itself is the reason why I get it. I also use this on Volter. Um, 
when you kill or assist, that is important, or assist in killing a hyper, it increases your max health, health by 50, up to 15 times. And it's only effective while you're still alive. So basically what that means is if you get an assist, the assist has to happen before you died, if you understand what I'm saying. Like, you have to get the assist before you die, right? Like, you can't just, uh, you can't get the assist, you can't die before they die. You have to be alive when they die. Same with the kill. You have to be alive when they die for it to take off on you. So I'll show you. I'm going to go ahead and kill this guy, right? I'll go ahead and kill him. And we're just going to unload on him, right? We're just going to we're just gonna make this happen. And then you'll see a tick up here. You'll see, like, whenever you have passives on items or you have something that grants you something, you'll see all of it right here. So I just got plus 50 health, right? Now, the next thing that I have here is reactive armor. Now, what reactive armor does is it's a defense item, like pure and simple, but it reflects 10% of the damage done to you, back to your enemies. So while they're not down, and they're probably going to focus you because you're going to be the bane of their existence, because you, you literally throw them everywhere with your punches, and you down them, if you can consecutively down a team, they are going to get frustrated because you are going to be the reason why they die. So if you're having trouble downing them, and they're like just constantly trying to take away your health, they're hurting themselves too so by the time you actually get to them they're just they're just screwed so that's kind of why i get reactive armor on her now every time that i build period i always build as in accordance to what's going on in the game i won't build something that doesn't make sense at that time right so if i'm diving a lot i'll get frost edge because i'll try to max out frost edge really quickly and the reason being is because i'll get that health bonus um or that health barrier i'm sorry Frost Edge and or, depending, Colossus Shield. Colossus, Colossus Shield reduces the siege damage done to me. When hit by an enemy defense tour, it, it ignores uh, armor destruction effect for 8 seconds. So it reduces the damage that's done to me. And it also it's a good defense item and max health. And it gives a cooldown reduction. Those are all nice things that you definitely want when you're playing Jennifer. Now, her unique item that I actually use, most people use her mask. I actually use her galactic suit because I like the max health. And I like the move speed increase. On top of that, it increases my impact gauge per hit to plus 10. So right now, it's plus 5, if you remember correctly. Go over here and hit him. So it's plus 5. So we do this. I'm going to let 0 out. <clears throat> it include, I'm sorry, it increases my impact gauge per hit to plus 10. There we go. So it just increases it, like, a lot, as you can see. Um... Lord, my throat. I'm sorry, guys. I, I need some water, like, real bad. Either way. Hmm. Now then, so this is basically how I build her. Um, this is a really aggressive build because I can actually go in and do a lot and not be worried about dying, to be honest with you. Now, early on, you're probably going to die. I'm going to kill him to try and get the max stacks here real quick. This might take a while though. Um, probably not going to, because it would again take a while. But yeah, you'll probably die early on unless you're playing kind of careful. Like your best bet is to farm up really quickly with her because you at least want to have this item before you, like the first point in the item. Understand that, I mean the first point, not the whole item. You at least want to have the first point in the item before you start engaging really hard in fights. Um, but if you can't, if you have a team that's just really aggressive, then definitely go help them. But at the same time, like, you want to try to have that. And if you don't, you don't. Uh, at least if you're going with this build. At least if you're going with this build. So, in essence, regardless, um, there's a few things I want to point out. And I've already stated them. I just want to restate them because I find them important. Especially when, play when playing this game in general, you want to you want to kind of follow these kind of key rules here. Uh, I might make a video just based on this, but know why you're going where you're going kind of understand what's happening on the map understand your placement should you be there why are you there and if you do die why did you die not not what did your team do that made you die why did you die were you perhaps too deep did you go too far did you think you had follow-up and you didn't and by follow-up when i say that i mean your team coming in you also have to understand people in the game aren't mind readers right so they might not fully understand that you are, in fact, 
wanting them to follow up with you. Um, so Jennifer gives you an option, thankfully, when you can down people and you can type, hey, come in, let's attack, you know, whatever. But in essence, every character that you play, you need to understand how they work, get them to, get them to work for you the way you want them to. But you need to understand exactly how they do, in fact, work. Why you go in with them, why you don't. How you should be placed. If you should be in the back of the team while the team fight's happening, or if you should be kind of in the front, or what. You need to know your positioning and uh, why you're going wherever you're going. When you do jungle, you also need to watch your map. Like, that's very important. You need to see what's going on with your team, watch their health, see if they need you. I know I said, you know, try to farm hard with her early, and you should. But at the same time, you need to make sure that your team is fine. Even if it's not something that you want to do, if they need help, go help them. You understand? Just go help them. Like, because in the at, at the end of the game, if your team's not getting help, then they're it's just it's just an awful situation. Like, it's just an awful situation, and it gets frustrating when you don't get help. Like, I've played out of the jungle too, and I've needed help, and you know, if they don't come, I'm like, well, that's that sucks, man. Well, here I am, rock me like a hurricane. Well, anyway, guys, that was my kind of short-ish tutorial on Jennifer, Jennifer Redux, Redux, it, it, it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed, I look forward to seeing you on the next one, and have a great hype, hype, hype for Thursday, great day, morning, noon, or night, whatever it is, wherever you are, I'm sorry if it's Friday for you guys, if you're just now seeing this, I've tried to upload it, it's Thursday for me, so I'm uploading it now, again, I'll be streaming here in about an hour, um, I'll just be reading over some comics, we're gonna be doing chill stream, no games, no pirate stuff, anyway, Thank y'all for coming out. Love you guys. And I hope Hyper, I hope, I hope, 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 Hyper Universe lives on strong. And to all you new Xbox players, have fun, friends.